Okay, in this video we are doing Calc AB problem set number 79. Uh, the problems and a playlist are in the description below, and let's do them. Number one, use the table of values for the differentiable function f of x to answer the questions. Part A, approximate f prime of 6. So we know that we have to figure out in the table uh, what numbers 6 is in between. It's between 4 and 7. So we'll use the slope of the secant line on 4 to 7 to approximate this. So I'm going to say f prime of 6 is approximately equal to, you got to have approximately or you're going to lose a point. And then you want to show the setup. So f of 7 minus f of 4 over 7 minus 4. Then you can just do whatever calculations, however you want to do it. So uh, that's going to be 5 minus 8 is negative 3 over 3, so negative 1. And that's it. You don't have to justify anything. That's your answer. Now part B, it says prove that f prime of x equals negative 1 for some x between 4 and 7. We do not know that that happens at 6. We just know that it happens. So we're going to use mean value theorem on this because it's definitely the mean value theorem setup. So um, we need to know that the function is... Uh, continuous on closed interval, differentiable on the open, but we're just told it's differentiable. So I'm going to say f of x is differentiable, which implies that it is continuous. Therefore, by mean value theorem, uh, f prime of c is going to be f of 7 minus f of 4 over 7 minus 4, which is negative 1, as we calculated previously, for some c between 4 and 7. It's really important to understand the distinction. For part a, we approximated f prime of 6. We don't know what f prime of 6 is. We just know that a good guess would be negative 1. In part B, we use the mean value theorem to prove that there is definitely somewhere between 4 and 7 where f prime is equal to negative 1. We don't know that it's at 6. It could be at 5. It could be like anywhere. All right, next question. Part C, approximate the integral from negative 2 to 7, f of x dx with a trapezoidal sum. Okay, so trapezoidal sum. I like, whenever I'm approximating a definite integral, I always write the integral and I write approximately equal to. So I would start with that. And then every trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of the bases. And you just kind of work your way through the table. So for the height, it's going to be the difference between these x values, which is 3. And then we're going to add up 4 and negative 3, which is 1. And then we're going to do one half, because another trapezoid. The height is from 1 to 3, which is 2. And then the sum of the bases, which will be uh, 3. And then uh, one half, because of a trapezoid, the height is going to be from 3 to 4, which is 1. And then the sum of the bases is 14. And then uh, finally, we have one more trapezoid. So one half, the height goes from four to seven, which would be three. And then the sum of the bases, which would be 13. And then on the AP exam, you would definitely leave this. In my class, you would not leave this. You would kind of simplify it. Um, so this is going to be 31. All right. Next up, approximate the integral from negative two to four. So you really got to like keep on top of these things. Make sure you're reading the bounds correctly. So we're going from negative 2 to 4, not all the way to 7. We're going to use a right sum. So the integral from negative 2 to 4 of f of x dx is approximately. So it's a right sum. Uh, so we're going to have basically like base times height, however you want to think about it. We're going to have a 3, and then the right sum will use this negative 3. So 3 times negative 3. Then we'll have uh, plus 2 because we're going from 1 to 3. And then the height will be 6. So 2 times 6. Then we'll have, um, we're going from 3 to 4, so that's just 1. And then a right sum, we'll use the height at 8. And we get this. You can always draw pictures of it. Um, I often don't draw a picture, which is probably a flaw. Like, I probably should be drawing pictures because it definitely makes it easier. But if you do enough of these, which you definitely should try to do, eventually you can just kind of, like, picture it in your head and, and just use the table to do it. You can see, though, that the table ends up a real mess if you do more than one problem, kind of marking up the table the way that I do. So that is a disadvantage. You could always recopy the table if you needed to, or just draw a picture, which, whichever you want. All right, next up. Evaluate the integral from negative 3 to 5 of the absolute value of x minus 2 dx. All right, so this is one where we look at it, and we know how to do this. We're always going to do this with a graph, right? So the relevant points on the graph will be at negative 3 and 5 because of those are bounds of the integral, and then at x equals 2 because that's the vertex of our absolute value. So I'm going to make a, a, a number line here. I'm going to put those numbers on it. Then I'm going to plug negative 3 in. I get negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, but the absolute value is 5. Plug in 2, you're definitely getting 0. And then when you plug in 5, you get 3. Um, and I'm going to draw the triangles. And we're just adding up two triangles. So anytime you hit this type of problem, that's what your brain should say. Oh, I should draw triangles and add them up. By far the easiest way to do it. I do it all the time. So this is going to be 1 half and then 5 times 5 plus... 1 half, and then 3 times 3, 
which like always seems to happen. Uh, I don't want to say something that's completely wrong. I think maybe that does always happen that you just like half, half a square, half a square. Oh, you know why that is? It's because I keep writing problems where the slope is one, right? One or negative one. It would not be the case if the slope was not one or negative one. So don't, don't read into that too much. Make sure you're actually doing the work. All right, and then we got one more problem here. Evaluate uh, the integral of e to the 3x cosine of e to the 3x dx. Okay, so this is, to me, a classic u substitution problem. So I'm going to let u equal the argument of cosine. So u is going to be e to the 3x. And then du would be uh, 3 e to the 3x dx. But we have an e to the 3x and a dx. I'm going to move the 3 to the other side and say that du is 1 third. Sorry, 1 third du, rather, is e to the 3x dx. Then we're going to make our substitution. So e to the 3x dx becomes 1 third du. So we'll have one third, because you always pull out the constant multiple, cosine of u and du. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. So we're going to have one third sine of u plus c. But then, of course, u is e to the 3x. So our final answer is one third sine of e to the 3x plus c. And that's it for this problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.